What is an open redirect? Before we can really talk about that, I think we should spend a little bit of time talking about redirects in general. So you may have noticed that sometimes when you click on a link, you don't end up quite where you thought you were going to. Uh, for example, if you click this link below, um, it looks like the link is to tomnomnom.uk, uh, but you'll actually end up on example.com if you click it. So to understand what's really going on, I think we should take a look at what happens when your web browser requests a page. So when your web browser requests a page, uh, it opens up a, a network connection to a server on the internet, and it sends it some text that looks a little bit like this. Um, and we're oversimplifying a little bit here, but this is good enough for our purposes. So let's break it down line by line. The first line looks like this, get slash index.html, HTTP slash 1.1. This is your browser telling the server it would like to get the web page located at slash index.html and stating it's using HTTP version 1.1. Uh, the next line, host example.com. Uh, this tells the server that the browser was loading pages on example.com. There's often more than one domain hosted by uh, any one server, so the browser needs to be explicit about which domain it's talking to. Uh, accept text slash HTML. This tells the server the browser will accept HTML content in response. Uh, and, and finally, we've got connection close here, just as a, a final example. This just tells the server to close the network connection between it and the browser when it's finished sending the response. And in response, the server will send something that looks a little bit like this. So the response here is made up of what we call headers, uh, then an empty line, and then the HTML or, or maybe the image content or whatever it was that the browser actually requested. Um, the headers tell the web browsers things about the data that's about to be sent. So for example, that in this case it is HTML content or how long the content will be. Um, but one of the more important parts is this first line and specifically this part of the first line. Here it says 200 OK. And that tells the browser that everything worked OK. And we call this a status code. And there's lots of them. You might be familiar with 404, which means not found, or maybe a 500 or, or 503, which means a server or an internal server error. So there's a special set of responses that really mean the page you requested is somewhere else. Uh, and quite commonly, we use a 301 on 302 responses for that. Less commonly, we use 303, 307, and 308. Um, and they all work slightly differently, behave slightly differently, but for our purposes, it's enough to know they cause the web browser to be sent to a different page or to be redirected. So if we look at that link from earlier, when your browser makes the initial request to tomnomnom.uk, the response looks a bit like this, HTTP 1.1, 302 found, location, HTTPS, colon, slash slash example.com. So the 302 status code tells the browser it actually needs to load the URL specified in the location header. Uh, and in that case, that's example.com. So the result is, as we saw earlier, the browser will ultimately load example.com. So websites use redirects all the time. Uh, and not just to redirect you to other websites, but for example, to send you to the account page when you've logged in, or maybe back to the home page when you've logged out. Um, and sometimes where the user is redirected to is completely hard-coded and the user has no control over it whatsoever. But sometimes it can be influenced by some user input. So if you look at the URL we used earlier on, you might have noticed this URL equals part in the URL. Uh, and that's a parameter or query string parameter. And that can be changed by anyone. Uh, we can try changing it to something different and seeing what happens. So if we load the original URL, we can uh, end up on, in this case, example.co, if we don't quite type it right. Uh, but we could change that to, say, evil.com, uh, and we'll end up on evil.com instead. Uh, in this case, there is no checking performed on this URL parameter. So we can make it absolutely anything. Um, and this little script that I've got hosted here will just redirect easy to it. No questions asked. This isn't a vulnerability in itself, but technically speaking, we would call this an open redirect. So you might wonder where the vulnerability is. So where things can go wrong is where there really should be restrictions on where a user could be redirected. 
So to illustrate, let's consider a hypothetical single sign-on system. Uh, it's hosted on sso.example.com and some website that uses it. Let's say yourbank.com. Uh, and this is a fairly common pattern in use these days. So when a user wants to log into yourbank.com, uh, they click a link and they're actually sent to sso.example.com. Um, so sso.example.com holds all of the user details so that the bank doesn't have to. Uh, and the URL they're sent to might look a little bit like this. Something on sso.example.com, a login page. Uh, and we've got two parameters here. We've got a consumer parameter that is set to your bank uh, and a return parameter that's set to the URL that we want to return to, yourbank.com. Um, so that's all fine. So the consumer parameter tells the uh, sso.example.com servers uh, where the user has come from, what site they were on when they clicked the link, uh, and the return value tells the servers where to send the user back to after they've successfully logged in. So once the user's logged in, they get redirected back to that return URL, uh, and they have this extra bit tacked onto the end of the URL. Uh, I've called this parameter auth, it could be called anything. Uh, really, it's an authentication token. It's representative of uh, that user, and it's specific to that user. So anyone in possession of this token really can go to yourbank.com uh, with this auth equals this string on the end and uh, end up logged in as that user. So you might have already spotted where this could go wrong. Well, let's say an attacker pretended to be from yourbank.com um, and sent out phishing emails asking customers to log in by following this link where the return parameter has been changed to evil.com. Anyone uh, who falls for that uh, and clicks that link and logs in is going to be sent to evil.com with the auth parameter on the end. And that makes it accessible to the owner of evil.com. Uh, they can take that uh, value and use it to log into yourbank.com as the victim. Um, I think that's a fairly obviously bad thing uh, to happen. And there's many other ways that open redirects can be leveraged, but I think this is perhaps one of the most damaging. I hope that cleared some things up for you.